저는 이번 세션의 진행을 맡을 코트라 영양개발처의 정혁 차장입니다. 오늘 이번 세션의 진행 순서는 약 1시간 반 정도 진행이 되겠습니다. 먼저 세마츠 지로 교수님의 교토식 경영에서 배우는 인재의 힘을 주제로 강연을 듣고 끝나는 시점에서 Q&A 시간을 갖도록 하겠습니다. 지금 세마츠 교수님은 현재 교토대학에서 경제학과 교수로 재직 중이시고 교토식 경영의 전도사로 알려져 있습니다. 잘 아시다시피 교토는 도쿄 이전에 약 1000년 정도 일본의 수도였습니다. 그래서 지금도 어떤 문화와 전통이 많이 어우러져 있는 그런 도시입니다. 이런 교토에 그 여러 가지 이제 세계 첨단 기업들이 많이 이제 존재를 하고 있습니다. 특히 이제 종합전자 부품 업체인 교세라랄지 또 이제 HDD용 모터 업체인 일본 전산 그 다음에 이제 반도체 업체인 롬, 그 다음에 이제 세라믹 컨덴서 업체인 이제 무라타 제작소 등등의 이제 업체들이 각 분야에서 그 이제 세계 1위를 달리고 있는 어떤 이런, 그렇게 이제 달리고 있습니다. 근데 이제 그 전에 일본이 한 1990년대 이후에 이제 가끔씩 잃어버린 10년, 뭐 잃어버린 20년으로 표현될 정도로 상당히 이제 그 경영, 경제 사정이 좋지 않았고 따라서 기업들도 어려움을 겪고 있었습니다. 그럼에도 불구하고 어떤 교토에 있는 이제 기업들이 여러 가지 이제 세계 1위의 어떤 그런 시장 점유율을 바탕으로 고성장을 지속해 왔습니다. 여기에 착안해서 이제 세마츠 교수님께서 이제 교토식 경영이라는 책에서도 이제 분석을 했었고 이들 기업이 어떤 성공하는 요인 이런 부분들의 어떤 그 이유, 기업 문화, 경영 특징 이런 부분들을 기존에 저희들이 가졌던 일본식 경영과 대비해서 교토식 경영으로, 경영으로 명명을 했고 여기에 대해서 여러 가지 이제 그 원인 분석 등을 이제 그 하셨습니다. 오늘 아마 이런 부분들을 주제로 이제 강연을 하실 것 같고 간단하게 이제 세마츠 교수님을 소개해 드리면 이제 교토 공업대학에서 전자 재학을 전공하셨고 미국 스탠퍼드에서 이제 MBA를 하신 뒤에 이제 교토 대학에서 이제 경제학 박사 학위를 이제 취득하고 지금 현재 이제 교토 대학에서 경제학 부 교수로 재직 중이십니다. 이제 그 세마츠 교수님은 그 지금은 학계에 계시지만 그 전에 일본 JGC 컴퍼니에서 어떤 그 시스템 엔지니어로도 활약을 하셨고 또 맥킨지 저편에서 경영 컨설턴트로 또 이렇게 이제 컨설팅 업무를 쭉 하셨습니다. 아마 미국과 일본 기업에서 어떤 그런 그 현장 경험을 가지고 계시는 어떤 이제 그런 배경이 되고요. 그 후에 어드밴스드 컨설팅 매니지먼트라는 컨설팅 컴퍼니를 창업을 하셔서 어떤 조직 혁신, 어떤 이제 전략 이런 부분들을 주로 IT 비즈니스 위주로 컨설팅을 해 오셨습니다. 주요 저서로는 여러 가지 IT 관련 또는 이제 오픈 시스템 등등의 이제 다수의 저서를 가, 이제 그 쓰셨습니다. 그럼 지금부터 이제 세마츠 치로 교수님으로부터 교토식 경영에서 배우는 인재의 힘을 주제로 강연을 듣도록 하겠습니다. 힘찬 박수로 맞이해 주시면 고맙겠습니다. 아, uh, thank you for introduction. Um, my name is c h i h i o Suematsu. Uh, professor, Graduate School of Management, Kyoto University. Um, I lived in the uh, Silicon Valley area for a few years, so I had uh, various uh, interactions with the uh, entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley. And uh, when I came to uh, Kyoto for the first time, I see many similarities between Kyoto and Silicon Valley. And, uh, the key success factors of Kyoto looked obvious, obvious to me, but people said it still remained in question and answered. So that triggered me to write a book about Kyoto style management in 2001. I'm glad to know that the uh, many happenings in these 10 years after I wrote my book verifies my observations were right. Actually, I see uh, many similarities among high-performance companies beyond countries. 
as the markets become not, uh, global and the businesses become global and the people global become uh, uh, global. So it is my honor to uh, introduce the uh, excellent competence and the part, power of human talent of Kyoto style management, especially focusing on the difference of Kyoto style companies, which have been growing rapidly with high profitability. And their Tokyo counterpart, which has been stagnant for two decades. So um, the goal of my presentation here is to clarify the different way of thinking or different methodologies of thinking in Kyoto or companies. And uh, I would like to show, I would like to start my presentation by showing the uh, high performances of Kyoto or companies in comparison with the uh, Tokyo counterpart. So here is the uh, compared the transition of revenues between Kyoto style companies and major OEM or Tokyo companies by index figures setting the number 100. So this is in what we call the lost decade, which is right after the uh, Japan's economy bursted. So the growth from 1991 to 2001, Kyoto style companies about 100% and the major OEMs 25%, four times difference between them. The Kyoto companies pick up here is uh, Kyocera, which is the uh, electric appliance and parts company. Rom, it's a uh, system on chip manufacturer. Nidec, uh, precise spindle motor manufacturer. And Murata, uh, electric parts. And Horiba, electric analyzers. And Omron, electric parts and analyzers. Tose, game software developer. And uh, Nichikon, semiconductor. Japan storage battery, presently called uh, GS USA and Samco International, which is the uh, process manufacturer companies. Uh, all those companies have uh, more than 60 to 80% worldwide market share with a difference at technologies. Kyoto side companies are limited, not only limited to uh, electronic industry, but uh, I here picked up the company only from electric company for Apple to Apple comparison. You can see the Kyoto Star company's performance is higher, four times to five times than their counterparts, which is the same as other comparison indexes, such as uh, profit rate or gross profit rate. You will see in some more coming chart. Uh, by the way, uh, this is a lost decade, and after lost decade, uh, in the half of two, 2001s, there is the, uh, uh, all the exporting companies show the great performance without exceptions because of very strong economy of China. So in the last half of 2001, all the companies um, in turbulence as all the companies in the world are. So I believe that in this decade will be appropriate to make a comparison, I believe. So I would like to show you first the uh, high performance of Kyoto style uh, companies in comparison with uh, their Tokyo counterpart. So this is a comparison of uh, operating profit and uh, this uh, shows the transition of operating profit by index figure, setting the number 90, 91, 100. 
and uh, the uh, major aims, you no know, differences, and the Kyoto Shell companies uh, three times higher. The increase uh, 20 percent and 200 percent, also 10 times difference. So this is a comparison of return on sales. Average of Japanese companies are as low as 3 to 4 percent, like here. And uh, almost all, so much OEMs are almost the same as the Japanese average, which means uh, their business make a little value added. And they are in cost competition, mainly with Asian countries. But Kyoto Star companies here, it's about 10 to 80 percent. So Kyoto Star companies are making a high value added. So this is a comparison of a return and asset. So our way differs about uh, four to seven times better in Kyoto style companies. And the yellow line, yellow dotted line, is the uh, Nikkei 225. And the major OEMs is uh, below, to, below the Nikkei 225. So this is a comparison of return on equity. Uh, this uh, is a little bit tricky because you can get better number when you increase your debt to leverage. But Kyoto style companies depend more on their own equity than debt. Therefore, in good times, the period doesn't get bigger. But on the contrary, in bad times, the so profit were not so good, uh, uh, profit are not so bad, which means the uh, performance uh, very stable. I think this is important in uncertainty environment like this. In short, keywords of key uh, Kyoto Star companies performances are threefold, first, growing, and second, profitable, and third, stable in the era of education. Those can be recognized as ideal in this current situation, I believe. So I would like to uh, confirm the shift of global competitive environment by three keywords. Those keywords are first, winner takes all, uncertainties, and global one market. Talking about the winner takes all, Mr. Nagamori, the president of uh, NIDEC Corporation, who I uh, work with quite closely as uh, one of uh, board member, he explained winner takes all situation saying that only number one company can enjoy the, all the profit. The, the number two company profit is uh, about plus minus zero. And the number three company would be making a huge profit, losses. So all the profit concentrating on the only one company, and because the number one position in the global one market becomes more important, the competition becomes fierce and fierce. You have to recognize globalization means competition. So the requirement for decision making uh, and actions become more and more agile, or quicker, and uh, uh, more careful selection of domain and more concentration on resources with more risks. The concentration of resources enable even small venture startups to overcome the uh, behemoths by the volume of investment. And more appropriate uh, management to satisfy the needs of market and incentivize the employees. And in addition, hard working is very important. So again, the gap between winner and loser is getting large. The competition in global one market become very, very fierce. In short, key success factor of the Kyoto style companies is that they have adapted themselves for this drastic change of competitive environment. 
it can be uh, clearly recognized in this uh, difference of the organization, especially the difference of raison d'etat, the meaning of existence. Here is a P Peter Drucker's uh, comparison, community versus organization. I'm sorry, the, the chart is a little busy, but uh, I modified the expression uh, village community where they put the most, uh, the, uh, they put the first priority on peaceful life for all members. In uh, competing organization, they put the first priority on achievement of goals. <clears throat> so in village community, change means drop off of some other member, deregulation and loss of some other member. In competing organizations, change means growth, innovation, and gain of the organization. So, so in village community, power is more distributed, and everybody has the right to say veto. So sometimes vested right maintain rejection or the changes are quite rejected and uh, weighted allocation of resources quite denied. You know, weighted allocation of resources is a strategy. So it's hardly deploy to strategy. So in competing organization, power is concentrated to a leader. So decision is based on logical rationality and uh, uh, resources are concentrated with high risk. You know, companies taking high risk cannot always achieve successes. They will fail, more probably, because risk is risk. But sure thing is that competition taking no risk will fail. The global competition is so fierce and taking high risk is indispensable. So sometimes concentration power create the uh, dangerous dictatorship. So this system should be backed up by a governance structure. <clears throat> In village community, they are likely to avoid assessment of colleagues, I mean, I mean colleagues, spontaneity. They are supposed to uh, act spontaneously. So they deny assessment, selection, and promotion. In competing organization, they search for a perfect evaluation and selection, which is very, very difficult. And that strengthens empowerment and monitoring. So village community likely to aid for low performers, so avoiding the gap. So sometimes it's criticized inappropriate equality. But competing organization, uh, favorable treatment for high performers because a uh, gap is a very strong incentive to the uh, high performer. So village community try to exclude outsiders and adhere to uh, internal resources to, to, to avoid the uh, change, drop off, and the deregulation of some other vendors. So avoiding uh, mob mobilization of human resources. In competing organization, they deploy outsiders very aggressively. So uh, utilizing uh, external resources and promoting the, the mobilization. So in village community, they pursue homogeneity. So they exclude, sorry. So they exclude the heterogeneity and education should be focused on the obedience. So competing organization, they accept and utilize the, the diversity. So heterogeneity is the origin of uh, change. So education should be focused on change and independences. So uh, village community are likely to deny competition, sometimes uh, criticizing the right side. It's a law of the jungle. And the competing organizations, uh, competition principle is very, very important. So characteristics on the right side are also seen these days among higher performance companies beyond the countries, such as Singapore, China,
Taiwan and Korea as well, and high-tech startup companies in Silicon Valley, like uh, Bill Gates or Stephen Jobs or all those kind of people. So left-side people criticize right-side people, saying that it's Anglo-Saxon law of jungle. But the reality is the, uh, uh, you know, uh, Taiwan, China, or Singapore, so it's somewhat like an Asian law of jungle. So here is the uh, 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 characteristic characteristics which all Kyoto style companies share. First, they do not believe in the end product miss. In other words, uh, they are independent from k -Rets. And they have a specialized core technology which have a 60 to 80 percent worldwide market share with niche product. They are quite open and horizontal uh, this integration model. As Kyoto style companies' products are purchased and embedded into uh, other products of other companies in other countries, so they themselves are much more open to purchase parts from other companies, including Asian companies. So they give priority to competition above harmonization of their communities. And uh, because this kind of study was not welcomed by most of domestic uh, market dominated by KDETS, a uh, business group, so Kyoto Star Company's past success were not in Japan, but overseas. So client list including names such as uh, IBM, or Texas, or Motorola, uh, those kind of great name gave such small companies significant impacts on their domestic marketing acti activities later on. So in essential, they are rational, sometimes being criticized inhuman, and the critical thinker being criticized extreme. <coughs> and uh, with independence and originality backed up by uh, uh, aspiration and mental strength, or <coughs> you can say fighting spirit. Without fighting spirit, it's uh, quite difficult to create new things or change uh, things. So as a result, they are quite decentralized well, with well-managed accounting system they put emphasis on cash flow management, and uh, they do not take an, uh, seniority-based promotions like other companies, uh, Japanese companies, and they are great IT users, and they have a very good corporate governance and uh, explicit responsibilities. Those are quite common these days, of course, but they developed those items 15 to 20 years earlier than Tokyo companies. And I would like to talk a little bit more about the uh, module and interface approach, one of the uh, uh, most outstanding characteristics. And this is closely related to uh, logical thinking, creative thinking I'll talk about later. So, <clears throat> Module is defined here as a mechanical and electric parts sharing interfaces to be replaceable, de deployable, and substitutable. So modules are designed and produced and stored and selected to satisfy the customer needs and combined to be a product. Modules are also procured from outside, outsource. The opposite way is uh, called integral approach, by which all needs from customers are uh, uh, customized. This is a key success factor for uh, typical Tokyo companies. But by modular approach, 
interfaces are designed very well. And pre -pub -pub publicated modules are integrated to develop a product. Platform is considered to be one module which plays a key role, somewhat like a hub and a spoke relationship. You may remember the uh, Volkswagen case. Uh, these days, it is widely known that Volkswagen actively deployed this modular architecture. Even though it had been believed that it is very, very difficult to apply the modular architecture into automobile industry, not like uh, electronics or computer industry. It is true that the application to mechanical parts is more difficult than uh, to electric parts, as mechanical parts have a production error to be modified or to customize. But it could be uh, overcome with the capability to manage the, uh, the modularity as a capability or logical thinking. The module structure has been taken by all the new global uh, players, such as China, Taiwan, and India, and by the new products, such as the smartphone, tablet PC, and electric vehicle, and of course, IT development. As IT and electronics become to play an uh, important role more and more, this is also quite effective to satisfy the needs of emerging markets, such as uh, agile product diversification with lower cost, which is very important, especially in China market. So module and interface structure is also able to be applied for information, technology, and organizations. For instance, technologies are decomposed to modules and those modules are integrated to develop a new technology. Information is decomposed to modules to be exchangeable. So organization is integrated by the modules of the people or the departments who share the interfaces to cooperate and collaborate. So modules share the interface to be integrated and combined so module structure guarantees the efficiency and agility as long as the interface are properly designed. Therefore, the design of interface is a key success factor. The design is very, very important to achieve the successful module structure. So how should we design the interfaces? The interfaces should follow the most frequent patterns of utilization. In other words, they are designed to be used most frequently. So human talent and capabilities are closely related to uh, this design process. So I will show you with the next slides about this. So this is a conceptual comparison of uh, accumulated cost by a number of transactions the case of uh, uh, module and the case without module. So with module approaches, there is a considerable cost for designing, but lower variable cost. The initial cost include understanding the needs for module and designing. The module should be utilized in wide range of application in considerable duration to be fully amortized. If the initial costs are invested and the module is not uh, utilized at all, the total cost will be increased as much as the initial cost. So cost, cost uh, here and initial cost are added. So it goes like this. So it's uh, no uh, meaning of investment. So therefore, it is very important to select carefully the area or domain to apply the module structure. In order to do so, the capabilities of understanding the market, taking and risk, uh, managing risks, taking and managing risks, and the structure designing are indispensable. 
module and interface approach affect the company's relationship as well. Modules are designed to be utilized as many as possible, as wider, widely as possible. Therefore, company relationship become more open to increase the utilization, increase the number of the transactions. So module structure, module is structured by interface. And by focusing on interface, the characteristics of and advantages of module become more clear. I would like to show you here in this slide, module and interface structure is appropriate for the new key success factors in global one market. Those were promotion of internal competition, risk taking, efficient utilization of resources, empowerment and incentives to the employees, and monitoring and evaluation. There is the uh, interface between modules. Usually module is more focused by researchers instead of uh, interface, but it is more important to recognize that module is defined by interface. I mentioned that the module and interface concept is also applied to an uh, organizational issue. Uh, part module, like electric parts module and mechanical parts module with interfaces are produced by module of people, or a group of people with the same interface. Therefore, interfaces for uh, parts uh, at the same time, interface for the people, interface for the organization. So with interface, what became possible are two folds. Uh, intermodular or between modules and intramodular or inside the modules. Uh, in terms of intramodular or between modules, addiction and subtraction or removal become much, much easier. You know, easy to add or remove the resources. When module plays the uh, same function, homo module, it will easily adjust the resources allocation and balance a lot. When module plays the hetero, the different function, hetero module, it will be distributed the uh, functions. So special function module is added, outsourced, or shared. Okay, so in terms of uh, uh, inside the module, ownership is given to be, to incentivize the, 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 the module. So freedom and autonomy is given to the uh, module. So responsibility is clearly set and the decision making is uh, empowered to the uh, module. So they are quite incentivized. And also they have uh, specialized functions. Function, functions are uh, uh, specialized and distributed. So in short, uh, uh, for intermodule, resources management, addition, uh, removal of resources is easy. So it, it, uh, it makes possible optimal allocation of resources. And uh, inside the module, efficiency improvement at each module become possible. So this is the same slide as the previous one, except I used the uh, terminology interface instead of a module. So accumulated cost by number of transactions the case of uh, uh, a case with interface and the case without interface. So you can say it's exactly the same thing as a module, that is there is a considerable initial cost for a designing interface, but lower variable cost. So designing uh, interface is crucial for a high ROI. Otherwise, again, um, this initial cost is added on this uh, without interface case. So uh, it, took a it took a lot of cost. 
So here's the uh, interface examples uh, besides the uh, part uh, interfaces, organizational interfaces. Uh, there are examples of organizational interfaces like this, uh, those items listed play the important role as an interface of transactions between people. That is, it reduces the transaction cost and enables the efficient and effective communications. So like uh, work policies, in-company standards, rules, guidelines, and manuals, systems, manager accounting standards, work evaluation standards, and communication rules. So think about uh, manual. So manual is considered to be the interface between boss and staff. So staff supply work to his boss according to manual. And boss will uh, manage, control, uh, educate, and evaluate staff according to the uh, uh, manual. So if there's no manual, there's a lots of, lots, lots of transaction, cost, transaction cost. And if there's a manual, uh, it's a s efficient communication between boss and staff. So IT is uh, very uh, useful uh, interfaces such as a database and network to, to make people communicate very well, efficiently. And organization structure, responsibility, authority. So with these interfaces, some of like uh, um, sales department and the manufacturing department can work together, uh, cooperate and collaborate. And strategy, business model, vision, mission, charter, those also work as an interface to converge uh, employees to one direction without any confusions. So uh, the Kyoto Star companies put emphasis on those kind of visions and mottos, and the famous one is uh, joy and fun at the Polybar company. Uh, this is very deep uh, vision, but the people can share the many, many things together to converge their uh, direction and activities. And uh, uh, famous one, another famous one is uh, uh, do it now. Do it without mistakes. Do it until completed. This is a, a Nidex motto. So, talk, uh, so talking about mo uh, manuals, uh, manuals is one of the example, but it gives modules very less autonomy, or less freedom. So it strictly controls the, the uh, employees. So it's very difficult to give them these incentives. So it's not very uh, popular these days. So here is the uh, difference of reason little slide again. Uh, with this, um, I would like to uh, make uh, clear that module and interface approach of Kyoto style companies come from this difference of reason little. I mentioned before that uh, uh, logical rationality in a competing organization. So logical rationality and logical thinking are needed to design well-functioning interfaces. And uh, uh, module is a concentration of resources with risk. Taking and managing risk is indispensable. And module and interface make evaluation monitoring and selection possible and easy. So consequently, empowerment is well promoted. So with interface, um, aggressive deployment of outside module is possible. That is, utilization of external resources become possible. So with interface, module will be diversified and it will be the source of change. Sorry. So in education, change of independence should be uh, uh, emphasized. Basically, module and interface approach come from uh, manager philosophy which promote competition. The characteristics on right side are also 
seen these days among higher performance companies beyond countries such as Singapore, China, Taiwan, high tech startups in Silicon Valley, and even Korea. So it is a critical success factor anywhere, but also it's difficult to achieve without a very strong leadership and with very strong governance. <clears throat> Logical thinking is another important capability to execute the key success factor of Kyoto style companies, including a module and interface approach. It is not easy to define what logical thinking is. It's a wide you know, meaning, and, uh, but I, here I'd like to focus and experiment using the uh, famous well-known uh, concept, inductive and deductive approach, or uh, sometimes called uh, deductionism, deductionism, which is the core of uh, uh, science. So many different things, many different phenomena have common parts like this. So extraction of this common part is inductive approach. And we can acquire essence or theory or what I call interface, uh, systems, module or standard or all I talked about. So, so those are uh, uh, utilized in common. So on this common portion, something could be added here. That is a deductive approach. And we can acquire new applications or create something new. That is a creativity. So with this kind of a, a way of thinking, uh, uh, inductive approach and deductive approach composing uh, uh, logical thinking is uh, quite uh, uh, useful to create new things or the problem solving the, to get the essential uh, issue of the problem. So this is another application of module and interface approach at the key Kyoto style companies. So those are, so those are treated as a module so new module is added to create a new modules. So if there's a many modules, there are uh, infinite number of applications to create. So uh, employees of Kyoto Star companies are not graduate of first ranking universities like uh, Tokyo counterparts and uh, employees. But actually they are well-trained logical thinkers and uh, their vitalization is quite famous. And uh, 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 Tokyo people still remain in the question. So I talked about uh, this logical thinking uh, many times and uh, I also teach at the uh, business school and uh, uh, I got the very typical reactions. That is, I don't know how to utilize this enough with the theory and show us some examples. It is difficult to understand without any examples. So this, you know, logical thinking is not familiar and uncomfortable for many people. So those reactions are very typical from Tokyo people and unfortunately I hear sometimes from Korean people. So um, these negative reactions come from those uncomfortableness of logical thinking. So we believe the corporate education system should be innovated to change this situation. And I and some Kyoto Star companies are cooperatively struggling now against this value shift. So this is uh, 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 what I'm proposing for the education innovation to make a global leadership from existing education toward new direction. So unilateral education should be changed to interactive self, sorry, interactive education. So not only one way from professor to uh, uh, students, but instead of it, more discussions or uh, to create uh, their own ideas and follow the rule mentality, uh, crowd mentality, should be changed to individuality, individual way of thinking, 
and obeying and dependence should be changed to uh, self-responsibility and self-control. So homogeneity oriented should be changed to a more diversified orientation. So enforcement of own value, like uh, you know, our university professors only enforce his own value, not listen to others. So it should be changed to understanding and respecting others, maybe each other between professor and students, or among students. And the village mentality spoiling, uh, village mentality spoiling innovation. As I told, uh, village mentality is uh, likely to spoil innovation. It should be changed to uh, competition and cooperation. So teamwork is very important. So possibly following past patterns is a typical education in a, a university. So it should be changed to a logical structure for interaction and create new things as I told. So people are very risk averse to and uh, avoid challenge and uh, so they scatter the resources which means uh, the strategy is hardly deployed. So it should be changed to a challenge and innovation for risk taking and risk solving, risk management, and strategic allocation of resources. Otherwise, it's uh, very difficult to, uh, it's uh, very you know, possible to fail the uh, uh, winner takes all competition. And uh, hiding information to uh, more disclosure and sharing information. So equal partnership equal relationship between the uh, uh, instructor and uh, students. So me too mentality and uh, frozen brain should be a more proactive thinking and creativity. So in, the, in those kind of uh, uh, mentalities, uh, Japanese students uh, care about ranking, university ranking, company ranking, that, that's a, as a goal, but they should choose they should select uh, from the, uh, uh, based on the vision. So many Japanese students lose motivation, but they should be more active learning. So, uh, so, so life of waiting and following should be changed to a more exploring the future life. So uh, I would say um, this kind of uh, uh, value is quite isolated. Sometimes we criticize ourselves Galapagos as a Galapagos island, maybe we may have, to a more global value system on society. I think this is quite converging uh, worldwide. So left side is quite appropriate for handling mass production. But now we need uh, handling uncertainties or creativity, creativity. So the right size is appropriate. So, so Japan has been focusing on the left side as a, a key, major key success factor. And in education in, the, in Japan has been focused on left side by now. In spite of many recommendations from uh, various business associations, this shift has not been achieved yet. Few universities, just few universities have shifted the direction yet. So corporate education is almost the same. So some Kyoto style companies and I are presently trying to achieve this shift. Uh, we don't think it's uh, easy, but we believe it should be accomplished very soon to survive the winner takes all competition in the global one market. I hope I could have the opportunity sometime to report to you the result of our trial. Thank you very much for your attention. Kanyan
Thank you very much for your inspiring lecture. Uh, you mentioned uh, Silicon Valley and Kyoto style. And uh, listening to your lecture, I thought of the, the uh, Forbes 400 richest people in the US. The, in the United States, the, the top uh, wealthiest persons are all uh, entrepreneurs. The, the, the top, the Bill Gates, the second is uh, Warren Buffett. He's not actually an entrepreneur, but he's a self-made man. And also the third is uh, Larry Ellison of uh, Oracle. He's also an entrepreneur. And I wonder whether uh, the, the uh, why, I, I'm not sure about the, uh, the Japanese situation, but I wonder if uh, the Kyoto style management uh, persons have climbed to the top as in the United States. And if not, why do you think it is not? First of all, the, the, the fact you mentioned uh, verifies the, uh, my uh, points in my presentations. And uh, as I said, in the global situations, uh, taking a risk or very strong leadership and uh, concentration power is very important. So in that way, uh, venture startups is in a favor uh, position. So even in the small companies can concentrate the uh, resources of investment into a very uh, small portion, and that overcome the, the behemoths, the huge companies, and uh, with uh, the risks. So that, that is very favorable in the uh, new uh, competitive environment. So uh, that explains uh, very well. And uh, um, Kyoto style companies are somewhat like, like that. It's, um, almost like a Silicon Valley. So there's a very strong leadership and uh, uh, they understand the importance of taking risk and very quick decisions and uh, very hard working as uh, Silicon Valley startup companies. So I think this, uh, the key success factors of uh, high performance companies are getting uh, very, very similar uh, these days. So. Uh, there seem to have been some misunderstanding. My question was uh, if uh, American entrepreneurs uh, climb to the top of the uh, wealthiest people ranking in the U.S., the first to the third are all uh, self-made men and uh, the Bill Gates and uh, Larry or, or Ellison are all entrepreneurs and uh, even the late uh, Steve Jobs is an entrepreneur. He's uh, climbed almost to the top. And I wonder if uh, the same situation applies to Japan, whether the uh, entrepreneurs and uh, self-made men climb to the top. It is not true of Korean situation. The wealthiest persons, uh, all they, in, in, they inherited their wealth. I wonder if the same situation applies to Japan, and uh, what is the situation uh, in Japan, and how do you explain the current uh, phenomena, the, the situation in Japan? I think you're totally right. Um, uh, Japan's situation is uh, very close to U.S., and I, I explained today the, uh, as a comparison of Tokyo style and Kyoto style. So Tokyo style is a very conservative and very political and trying to exclude innovations. But still, there is the uh, uh, area called Kyoto, 
and uh, uh, they, are main, uh, they are interesting companies gathering together. They are very innovative, and they are not interested in the way of uh, conservative traditional ways in Tokyo, and uh, trying to be a global to be a globalized. So they are not very much interested in the domestic market. Always they are acting as a domestic, and still trying to be. Uh, um, I'm sorry, still, uh, they are uh, uh, global, and still trying to be uh, uh, global. So I think there are two parts. So Tokyo is a very, very uh, conservative and uh, uh, difficult to deploy the innovation uh, into it. But uh, Kyoto is very much different, de dependent, independent and uh, searching for uh, uh, new ways. And I think they are quite successful. So now we are uh, uh, promoting that kind of uh, uh, innovation style to the, the society. So I hope it could be applied to this country as well. I think the important thing is that you think about it and you can finish the question. Do you have any other questions? Yes, I think. 강연 감사합니다. 그 자료를 보면 한국어로 질문해서 죄송합니다. 어, 가, 보게 되면 그러니까 선택한 일곱 개 기업과 교토 사례로 서, 선택한 열 개의 기업을 선정한 사유가 정확하지 나와 있지 않는데요. 이게 기업을 다르게 선택하면 결과가 전혀 다르게 나올 수 있지 않느냐라는 문제가 하나가 있고요. 두 번째는 보여준 자료를 보시게 되면 91년에서 2000년까지를 비교를 했습니다. 물론 91년에서 2000년까지는 모든 부분에서 교토식 기업이 성과가 좋은 곳으로 나와 있습니다. 만약에 이 결과를 똑같이 똑같이 2000년에서 2010년까지 적용한다 그러면 결과가 같이 나올 것이냐? 저는 그렇지 않을 것으로 생각합니다. 이두 가지 질문에 대해서 응답 바랍니다. 감사합니다. 음, I think I uh, presented presented the criteria, uh, like uh, uh, the independent from credits or uh, uh, open this integration model and. Uh, um, differential technology with a niche product, and that is a criteria. And uh, they have a, they share those kind of characteristics very, very strongly. So I, I utilize that kind of criteria. And as a, you said, yeah, right. So um, so this is also mentioned in my presentation that um, after 2000. 2000, it's a, it's a quite uh, 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 turbulence. So in the first half of 2000, uh, all the companies showed great performances, without exception, as long as they're exporting. And the last half, all the companies are very bad. But after 2001, it's the same situation as the, uh, the, the, the last decade, which means 1990s, I showed you today. I think the same situation is coming. Uh, uh, very clearly. So, as I said, um, the stable and uh, 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 structural comparison, I think it's appropriate to uh, uh, use the, uh, the lost decade uh, of uh, Japan right after the uh, bubble economy uh, had burst. Tabi. 답이 되셨습니까? 혹시 다른 질문 계신 분? 네. 네, 강연하신 내용 중에서 그 디시전 메이킹을 하는 데 있어서 리더의 기능이 굉장히 중요하다라고 생각을 그 얘기를 하신 것 같은데요. 그러면 뭐 작은 벤처 기업이든 큰 대기업이든 결국에는 리더는 한 명일 수밖에 없는데 그럼 팔로워의 입장에서는 어떤 마인드를 가져야 그 휴먼 리소스적인 면에서 그 효과적인 그 기업적 성과를 낼수 있는지 좀 궁금합니다. 
Okay, so um, sounds like I emphasize only one leader, like a dictatorship. So uh, leader is always important, but that kind of attitude uh, incubate uh, many leaders. So uh, so the employees, every, everybody, are supposed to play an important role in as leaders. So there are many projects started, or new businesses, or new products. So everybody uh, are expected to be leaders. So in the leadership oriented uh, environment, managerial style, the, I think leaders are easily to be uh, 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 trained and uh, uh, expected to uh, play an uh, important role. So, yeah, the, you are right. Um, I spend too much time for the uh, only one uh, leader, but the, the culture itself is quite important. So I told you that um, the importance of ownership and freedom, autonomy, and that is a kind of uh, leadership in one group. So uh, the Kyoto Style companies has a very good system to motivate the leaders with ownership, freedom, autonomy, and that kind of style has uh, many opportunities to uh, incubate uh, great leaders as well. 일본 기업분들이랑 많이 이야기도 하고 에어 컨디셔너 기업으로서 유명한 이제 다이킨이라는 기업이랑 같이 프로젝트를 같이 진행을 하고 있는데요. 어, 그 중에서 제가 느낀 점은 일본 기업들은 어, 결단력이 많이 부족하고 그다음에 리스크를 되게 피하려고 하는 게 있어서 오히려 리스크를 취하지 않는 게 리스크가 되는 시대인 이 세상에서 어, 일본 기업들이 그렇게 안정적으로 수익을 올려가는 그 교토식 스타일의 경영이 굉장히 특이하다고 생각하고 그 다음에 지금 아까 일본 전산 얘기를 들으셨는데 이제 하드 기술의 모터 기술을 만들고 있는 게 일본 전산인데 이제 하드 디스크 자체가 에 플래시 메모리 기술로 바뀌면서 거의 다 SSD로 넘어가고 있는 추세인데 이러한 기술에 대한 그 스피드랄까요? 그 하나만으로 모터 시장만에서 세계의 점유율이 굉장히 높은 기업으로 알고 있는데 일본 전사는 어 그러한 가운데서 이렇게 글로벌하게 스피드에 대응할 수 있는 능력을 어 다른 일본 기업들과 다르게 교토식 기업들은 구체적으로 어떻게 다른지 답변을 해주셨으면 감사하겠습니다. Okay, I understand your uh, I understand your question the two folds and the one is the uh, Daikin issue and uh, I uh, was surprised Daikin is I thought Daikin is a good very good company and you mentioned they are very slow and uh, uh, cannot take a risk and that is exactly what I uh, uh, presented um, the you know the uh, village community style. So they are very uh, slow, no leadership, and uh, no risk. And I think uh, uh, they, their priority is the uh, all members' uh, uh, stable, safe life. So it's very difficult to take a strategy. Um, so I think the second question is the, uh, the technology shift, especially you mentioned the uh, hard disk. And uh, I'm now, I know very well because I am a, uh, a board member of the company. And uh, they have a very strong market share of a spindle motor, and they can utilize the, uh, uh, the key technologies to expand very easily. Because there are many, many uh, areas to uh, utilize the key technology, especially in automobile industry. Uh, you, may, you may imagine the electric car, but uh, actually there's a huge amount of market in just a regular uh, a car because some are like uh, uh, automatic, automatic, automatic uh, wheel or uh, clutch will be changing drastically to be automatic or, or everything 
uh, the movement has been changed to a motors. So we have uh, lots of lots of opportunities to expand, and uh, because automobile industry is a very slow, because uh, you know, automobile industry is a very the importance is a safety. So it takes a long time to uh, develop a product. But uh, actually, NIDEC has uh, ex extremely um, many applications to uh, expand, uh, mainly automobile or like uh, electric appliances, like uh, washing machines or refrigerator. All those has a uh, uh, so-called so uh, low-tech uh, motor, but they could be uh, replaced to uh, more high-tech uh, motors to be more quiet and more be efficient. So there are huge opportunities. So I, that is the point, you know, uh, the module and interface. So using the uh, core module and add another module to create new things. So it's, uh, if there's a module and interface uh, approaches, there are many opportunities to create new things. So I think that's a good example uh, by utilizing the module to, to be more creative. Tabi, do you have other questions? Chegone,チェゴネ、グローバルキオプレサイジョクチェキミ、チュンギョシデゴ、ハトガテゴイシンダ。クリウイロンゴサイジョクチェキモン、デボボンゴ、テギオプリ、チュンシミデゴインデ
but still it's a very difficult. Um, always uh, change is a very difficult, so uh, it's not easy, but uh, uh, we are trying to uh, change the visions, everything. So that makes possible the students may change the way of thinking to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, prioritize the, uh, uh, the uh, real value of the, the education instead of uh, just the ranking, I hope. Thank you. Today, 우리 이제 세마스 교수님께서 이제 강의해 주시 강연해 주신 그런 부분들의 내용을 간단하게 정리를 해 보면 이제 과, 과거 그 교토 기업들이 이제 일본의 전반적인 이제 기업들 그리고 이제 도쿄 기업하고 비교해서 그 상당히 높은 어떤 수익 또 ROE ROA 등등을 기록을 했고 그런 부분들이 과거 한 1990년 2000년 동안에 쭉 지속돼 왔던 어떤 트렌드가 있었습니다. 그래서 이제 과연 그 이유가 무엇인가 하는 부분들을 이제 정리를 했고 그 부분이 어떤 이제 교토식 기업의 특징으로 정리를 해 주셨습니다. 이제 거기에서는 어떤 그 핵심 기술을 가지고 있고 그런 부분들의 바탕을 두고 시장 점유율을 한 60, 80% 정도 유지를 했고 또 이제 어떤 수평 분업으로 그 하면서 어떤 모듈화, 인터페이스 이런 부분들 해 가지고 사업 자체가 쉽게 확장과 어떤 뭐 선택과 집중을 할수 있었던 이런 부분이 아니었나 싶습니다. 그리고 또 하나는 거기에 어떤 이제 그 정신적인 어떤 그런 부분에서 상당히 비판을 두려워하지 않고 또 논리, 상당히 논리적인 사고를 가지고 있고 독립적인 성격을 가지고 있었던 그래서 결국에는 어떤 치열한 경쟁 환경에서 또 이제 우수한 성과를 계속 그 지속해 왔던 이런 부분들로 요약이 될수 있었던 것 같습니다. 상당히 이제 그 모듈하고 인터페이스에서 상당히 그 길게 그 구체적인 설명을 해 주셨는데 이 부분들이 이제 지금 어떤 그 사례로 들었던 교토에 있는 한 10여 개 기업들은 이런 그 내부 부품을 다른 어떤 그, 부, 그 제품 내에서 어떤 모듈화 해가는 이제 이런 부분들이 초기 비용은 이제 좀 투, 연구 투자는 됐지만 지속됨으로 인해서 상당히 그 경쟁력을 가져가는 어떤 이런 부분들에 대한 어떤 그 논리적인 설명을 해 주셨습니다. 단지 이제 이게 상당히 많은 부분 중에 하나가 그 경쟁을 두려워하지 않고 또 내부적으로도 어떤 이제 그런 경쟁을 촉진해가는 이런 부분들이었고 앞으로 이런 부분들이 계속되기 위해서 어떤 우리의 교육, 인재 양성 이런 부분들도 어떤 그 거기에 맞춰서 좀 바뀌어야 되지 않느냐 그렇게 해서 어떤 글로벌 리더십이 강화돼 가야, 가야 되지 않느냐 이러기 위해서는 이제 여러 가지 저희들의 이제 대학 또는 또 이제 기업에서의 교육 이 부분들이 이제 다양성을 중시하고 또 팀워크를 중시하고 또 개성 있는 교육으로 가고 과거의 어떤 순정적인 이런 부분보다는 여기에 그 자기 주도형 어떤 능동적 학습을 추진해 가고 하면서 이제 이러한 어떤 교토식 기업의 기업이 갖고 있는 이런 특징들을 계속 확산시켜 나가야 되지 않느냐 하는 요지에 어떤 이제 강연을 해 주셨습니다. 이런 부분들이 지금 이제 그 항상 불확실성이 많이 불확실성이 있는 자금의 지금의 시대에도 또 우리 한국 기업에게도 많이 필요한 부분이 아닌가 싶습니다. 오늘 세마츠 교수님께 다시 한번 박수를 부탁드립니다. 감사합니다. 네, 감사합니다.